Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. Hey, you want to ride? Yeah, can you take me to the first bus station? Sure. You can't see me here! Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> Don't move or I'll kill you. Throw me the key to the camper. Quick! I said move! What did he look like? He was about 20, I guess. He had one of those mirrored sunglasses. about your little friend huh <coughs> why are you torturing him he had nothing to do with this oh that's it isn't it you little whore you're afraid he won't be able to fuck you again right <coughs> leave her alone <laughs> you little pig let me show you what happens to a bastard like him no please don't kiss me Welcome back, ladies and gents. So you've just heard the trailer for Hitcher in the Dark. This is disc number 72 in the 88 Films Italian Collection series. The deets as listed on the 88 Films website are delivering an updated late 80s version of the classic Jallo or Slasher movie on Beryl Lindsay, director of So Sweet, So Perverse, Eaten Alive and Cannibal Ferox. Uh, and an delivers an alarmingly creepy tale of faltering sanity and unhealthy obsession. Hitcher in the Dark plunges us into the murky and nightmarish world of a matriarch-obsessed serial killer, Mark Glazer, played by Joe Balog. 
Spending his evenings raping and murdering innocent female victims, he eventually comes across Daniela who bears a striking resemblance to his dead mother. Produced by the legendary Schlockmeister General Joe DeMaro and following in the bloody footsteps of Hatchet for a Honeymoon from 1970, Maniac from 1980 or Lindsay's earlier work, Hitcher in the Dark takes us back to hell and back again in his seedly unpleasant grisly Italian psychodrama. This is currently available in a limited edition with only 2,000 units produced which have a rigid slipcase with new artwork from Graham Humphreys. We have a 40 page bound booklet featuring new writing on the film by Andrew Graves and Chloe Lee Taylor, a double sided fold out poster, a remastered 2K transfer and 185 1 aspect ratio from the original negative, a high definition Blu ray 1080p presentation, 2.0 English LPCM mono, optional English SDH, an audio commentary with author Troy Holworth, a daughter, an interview with Alessandra Lenzi, The Hitcher Sound, an interview with Piero Parassi. El Cinema Criminal di Umberto Lenzi Part 2 The original trailer Reversible sleeve featuring alternate artwork The technical specs This title was released last month, the 25th of the 7th um, It's regional lock to region B The audio format is DTS HDMA mono Picture format is 1080p HD 185 1. The runtime at 96 minutes approximately. The language is English and so are the subtitles. Um, right, so let's get into this, shall we? I had never seen this movie before, I'd never heard of it. Which, I mean, every now and again, I think I'm kind of catching up with Lindsay's back catalogue and then something else gets announced or released from one of these labels that kind of throws a spanner in the works. And this is certainly one I knew nothing about. And even from the brief synopsis that I've read there, the synopsis on the box, or even what I could glean from the cover artwork, I wasn't quite sure what to expect here. Is this a movie that is loosely paying homage to a movie like The Hitcher? Um, from the front cover, it certainly looked like it had the kind of straw dogs vibe about it. So I wasn't quite sure. Turns out none of them really, and I actually even take a little bit of umbrage with some of the descriptions in the the blurb that I've just read out. I wouldn't say this is an updated version of either a giallo or a slasher, to be fair. I think it's its own thing. This is, in some respects, kind of like what would happen if someone had the gleam of an idea similar to Psycho, but decided to do it now, but without the... <laughs> without the, the really good script and the great acting and all that stuff. Hitcher in the Dark is a hugely frustrating movie for me because in principle there are elements I really liked about it, but it's delivered in such a schlocky way that it kind of took me out of it. The subject matter is deeply dark. I mean, we basically have a guy driving around in a Winnebago, picking up women and then drugging them raping them and murdering them before disposing of the bodies. And like it said in the blurb there, he comes across um, one female victim who resembles very loosely, it's worth saying, uh, his mother who he's obsessed with. And as a result, his kidnapping is prolonged. He doesn't set out to kill her, rather kidnap her and mould her, change her psychologically so she would become his mother. Which in principle and on paper is dark as fuck. And the movie like always seems to be heading that way before you're hit with some of the worst dialogue I've seen in an 80s movie in quite some time. I mean, it is fucking horrific. And then just set pieces that don't make sense. Our, our, our killer Mark here seems to forget that his victim has tried to escape five minutes before and then allows her a position to do it again and again and again and again, and more tedious and mind-numbing scenarios, and not because he is setting her up, it's not like a black phone scenario, but rather that he just seems to be lulled in by the allure of this woman. It, it doesn't make any fucking sense at all, and as a result, some of the, the deliveries of her escapes are laughably bad, and his reaction's kind of terribly wooden. For the most part, Joe Balog is really good in this. He, like, he, to me, is believable as this kind of very dead inside, dead behind the eyes, 
you know, multiple serial killing deviant. And that aspect comes across really well. I just can't believe that this is the first woman that has struggled against him when I can see so many scenarios where this guy continually fucks up. Um, on top of that, you have a boyfriend who is kind of racing to help her. Think something along the lines of The Vanishing, which I imagine must have been in the background of when this movie was released. I, I, I find it interesting that the you know, the woman is drugged and then kidnapped and then the, the boyfriend is desperate to try to find out what happened. It reeks of that. The Vanishing would have come out the year before this came out. So I imagine there's some sort of influence there, even slightly. Um... But he's a, a laughably bad character as well. I mean, it's got all the camera flair of Umberto Lindsay, which is one of its charms. It's very well shot. I mean, plenty of those extreme close-up shots that Lindsay loves. Um, and it has the, the kind of exploitative flair that you would expect as well. Uh, like inexplicably, in the middle of this movie, we have a wet t-shirt competition with full tatas on display. And you're, you're trying to remind yourself that... Like in the scene before this, a man has physically tried to rape a woman, and you, the audience, have seen that. And then the next scene, it's like, "Ooh, let's clap for those puppies." It's just like so weirdly juxtaposed in a way, which just made me kind of feel like the the dissonance of a director doing this. It could only be Umberto Lindsay, couldn't it? Really, he, like, he wouldn't put the two and two together. To him, it's just driving the plot all along or giving titillation to the male audience. So. There's a bit of that. The score in this was pretty cool. I actually enjoyed uh, the score. It fit really, really well with it. And it's like, it is nice and short, this movie here. You zip through it in an hour and a half and it's done. The last thing I want to say about it though is the ending. The very last shot of this movie is a complete cop out in the style of, uh, you know, almost like a city of the living dead in that I'm like, could did we run out of budget? Like, why are we not showing the thing that people would want to see from this? And it's not as if you need great effects or anything for that. I've seen stuff already done in this movie which show me that the effects are there and we've been kind of bloody before, so I don't understand why we get it. It's, it's one of those things where I was like, we, we could have done that a lot better. And the end in itself is kind of fucking laughable, to be honest. Uh, they start to steer towards something very nihilistic and then pull back for something wholly confusing. The special features on this are where the fucking release shines. Um, I toggled on and off the Troy Holworth audio commentary and it's always great to hear from him. That's a guy that knows his shit and he was delivering some some kind of very, very punchy dialogue over it. Um, the interview with Lindsay's daughter is fucking brilliant. You just get a bit of an insight of what it feels like to be someone who will continually be asked questions about the legacy of her father, rightly, wrongly, good or bad. Um, as is the interview with Piero Parisi, who, do, who did the, the, the score for this. Um, and then the Il Cinema Criminal di Umberto Lenzi Part 2. Uh, it was great to see that I'd already seen Part 1, so um, it flows really nice into that. And the transfer is great. So, once again, this is another one where I'm a bit left head scratching why there's a limited edition release of this particular movie which is up for sale at like 25 quid, when the movie itself is kind of fucking garbage, but the features on it are kind of fucking great. So it's one of these things, I wouldn't say rush out and buy the, you know, buy the release just now. If they're going to put out a standard edition, certainly get that. I think 25 pound is quite a lot of money for a movie of this caliber, but certainly check it out when you get a chance to, because... It's it's not a good movie. It's a particularly bad movie. My score will reflect that. But there are elements, just little flashes of something that I think could have been a really interesting movie if just done differently. In terms of a grade for this one, it's a 2.5 out of 5. Somewhere between I didn't like it and I liked it. I can't go any higher than that. There's too many issues. The dialogue is awful. And I can't stress that enough. Um, but there were these flashes that I was like, you know, there's something in here, there's a cool story or something we could have used to move the plot along a little bit better. The ending is kind of dog shit, but what are we going to do? So there you go, a 2.5 out of 5 for Hitcher in the Dark.